There's something I like to mention every single week, and that's, I believe you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. I don't know how you found us here. I don't know if you got here by a Facebook post or, and you saw us on Instagram or, or someone invited you. I don't, I don't know. But one thing I'm sure of is this, is God has you here today for a reason because he has a message for you, a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. If you believe that with me, say amen. Amen, amen activates our faith and says, let it be done. Yes, I, even if you just want that to be true in your life, I would say amen to that. Say, Lord, I, I want you to speak a message in, into me today. And, man, I just feel like I'm, I'm about to do this whole series for me because, because fear is very real, isn't it? Fear is a very, very real thing that we have to face on a regular basis, and, and we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with that today. I want to ask you just a couple rhetorical questions that you don't have to raise your hand to, but have you ever felt like a prisoner? Have you ever felt, have you ever felt trapped? Have you ever felt anxious to the point where you're losing sleep, where you're not able to just ha carry on the conversation, where you're just not able to keep things going, the way because fear, anxiety, stress, and worry are holding you down. Well, how, how, uh, how common is this? How common is fear, anxiety, stress, worry, and how does this apply to you? Well, I, I just did a little bit of research. I did a little bit of homework leading up to this, and I, I, I looked at the Barna Group, who does a lot of research on a lot of different topics, and they say this. They say about 33% of people report, report feeling extreme stress. 77% of people experience stress that affects their physical health. Come on, stress, worry, anxiety, fear that affects your physical health. And on top of that, 73% of people say that stress impacts their mental health. 48% of people uh, have trouble sleeping because of stress. This is just polling people all across the states and saying this is just the percentage of people that respond. So maybe, maybe you feel this way too. Maybe you feel this way too. And there's also three new viruses every single year that I'm supposed to be afraid of. That was not Barna that gave me that information. That's CNN. Thank you so much. Come on, can I get a high elbow? Can I get a high elbow in the, in the house today? Uh, Y'all are keeping it sanitary, and I, and I really appreciate it. It's going to be great. By the way, anybody watching online today and deciding to stay home to, because you got sick kids, like, my wife, uh, my, my son is, is feeling a little under the weather. He's fine. He's feeling better already. We just wanted to do our part. But anybody watching online today, whether you, could, whether you couldn't make it today or whether you're just tuning in, whether you just dropped by, I believe you're here for a reason too. Uh, I know the world is changing and, and you maybe are having an opportunity to hear a message about Jesus um, in, a, in a way that you've never heard it before or you, maybe you don't feel comfortable stepping into a church setting yet. But I just want to let you know that your family already, we love you already. And when you get here, we'll give you a high elbow just to welcome you here. Come on, can we give it up for our online viewers too? If you can't hear them, they're clapping for you. They love you already. They love you already. Man, you know, stress, fear, anxiety, worry can cause you to lose your hair and make it turn gray too. Man, that's why I like do my hair really high because stress has like, it's right here. I'm not going to show you right now. But, you know, that's how I, that's why I do the hair like this. I was just, uh, I was just actually at a friend's church uh, this last week and during the midweek. We were doing a prayer thing together and, uh, and we look, I'm like a mannequin. I look like a lot of other white boys. I don't know what it is about me. I just look like them or they look like me. I'm not sure what it is, but Seriously, I could do his stunt doubles. That's how I came up with that joke. It's like I could do his, I could be part time at his church. And the only difference between him and I is he's got really short hair and I've got tall hair. And I told his church, I said, he's got the, he got the, the really great pastor gene and I got the tall hair gene, but we were brothers separated at birth. That's just how that works. But stress can really do it to us. Man, stress is real. Stress has a physical impact on our bodies. You see this? Of course you don't, because I try and blend it so you don't see it. It's all white right here, okay? This, this series is for me or anybody who's felt stress, fear, and anxiety in, in a way that you don't want to feel it anymore. That, that's, who the, that's who this series is for. That's who this message is for. If you're done feeling fear, if you're done feeling stress, if you're done turning on the news to, to look at the new fear, to look at the new thing I'm supposed to be afraid of, Sure, there, there are things going on in the world, but do we have to be paralyzed by that? No, we don't have to live that way. 
In fact, the Bible has plenty to say, and we're going to get all into that. The reason I'm doing this series, man, make myself feel better. Just to, just to kind of prove it to you. Um, when, so, okay, disclaimer. Disclaimer, everybody online. Disclaimer, everybody here. I, I have done a little time in my life. Uh, you have a pastor here with a past. Um, some of you have, know this, but some of you don't know this yet. And uh, I've, I've done my, my share about 12 months uh, down, and, and it was a very anxious and stressful time. Uh, I was 19 years old, like 19 through 21. I did patches of time in there. And I felt some of the most extreme fear and stress that I'd ever felt in my life in, in, the, in that season, in those years. Um, just to uh, kind of narrow it down and share with you a little bit about what I went through when I, when I, um, I, w- I got arrested because I was a drug user, um, recovered from all that. Praise Jesus, everybody. Got freed from all that. Got some new labels on me now, which I love. Um, but before that, I, I got in trouble and I got a big case and uh, they let me out with a stipulation. You know, if you break the law one more time, you're going to get all of this. And then I got out and like a month later, I broke the law again. And I went right back in. And I was so afraid of what was going to happen. In fact, I had a court date. So I was in, I was in the jail, and I had a court date scheduled at, at like 1 p.m. And so uh, we had lunch, and then they, they put, the, they put the, the handcuffs on, and they put them on your hands, and they put them on your feet. And then they connect the hand ones to the ones around your waist. Um, and it's, it's really demoralizing, uh, but I guess they don't want me to run away. And so I go into my court date. And the judge is talking to my lawyer that was appointed to me. I had a lawyer given to me because I, you know, I spent all my money on other things. I didn't have a lawyer. <laughs> so they gave me one. And the lawyer is talking to the judge. And let me just tell you, this, this lawyer they gave me, he wasn't a very good negotiator. Um, you know, they're bouncing ideas back and forth. And, well, what about a strike in five years? Well, what about, what about if we just give them uh, one strike in just three years? And then the judge said, well, what if we give them two strikes? I'm like, this, I'm, I'm like 20 years old. Two, what that means is if you get two strikes and you, you, you eventually get out, if you steal a candy bar, you do 25 years to life as, as a third strike. There is, there is no forget. So I came home from that court date, and the most recent negotiating was I was going to have two strikes and then have to do prison time, and then after I got out of prison, I was going to have two strikes. Um, I was so afraid. I was so afraid and fearful and stressed out. It was like, it was like a wet blanket was on me. I was hunched over. I was physically impacted by this. I came home, home. I came back to the cell and I was, it was like I had a blanket on me and I, and I came in and by the time I got back, it must've been three in the afternoon. I hit my bunk and slept for 24 hours. I didn't wake up until the next day. I was so, I don't know if anyone's felt anything like this before where you're just so, you're so stressed out and so afraid of what's going to happen and so unsure, so worried that your body just says, you know what? I quit. I quit. I give up. I'm not, or maybe your mind says, you know what? We're just not going to do anything. (laughs) We're just going to, We're just going to, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to do any thinking. We're not going to do any. My soul was saying, I just, I just can't. I just can't. So we're starting this series today called Fearless. And you can say that a couple ways. You can say fearless, like I don't have any fear. Or we can say it fearless. Maybe we we want to fear less because there's some good things to fear, like the fear of God. That's a good thing. But in a general sense, we don't want to be experiencing fear the way that we normally experience fear. We don't need to. It's unjustified. So we want to fear less. We're starting this series today. It's going to be a four-week series. And it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds good. Man, I want to fear less, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? it? Sounds a little too good. What if I told you it's possible to never experience fear the same way ever again? That there's a secret weapon. No, there's multiple secret weapons. And they're found right here that you could just tap into. You just tap into them. There's multiple secret weapons found right here in the word of God that say, man, you don't have to feel that way. Look, there are tools to deal with this. There are literal, actual things that you can do to fear less and to not have to deal with that anymore. 
despite the uncertainty of the world and the pressure we, we place on ourselves, Scripture directs us to release that anxiety, that stress, and that fear to God. And when we do, we don't have to lie awake at night. That shortness of breath that we feel, oh, I just can't breathe sometimes, but it can re be replaced by life-giving rest. Oh, man, I just so relieved. It can be replaced by that. It sounds good, doesn't it? We can feel at peace. We can feel a peace that goes beyond all understanding. You weren't created to exist in a constant state of worry. That's not how God made you. That's not how he designed you. That's not what he has in mind for your life. Your purpose isn't living in fear. I want you to step boldly into peace, and I want you to be fearless. And we're going to talk about how. Philippians 4, the word of God says this. In Philippians 4, starting in verse 4, says this. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. He says this. Don't worry. Say it with me. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. It's like we're supposed to be in this constant conversation with him. We're supposed to be in this place where we're just, we're just in touch with him and that peace is washing over us. Instead of feeling fear, instead of worrying about anything, we can just pray about everything. We're going we're gonna to tackle this. We're going to tackle this. It says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. To be fearless, we have to actually choose a higher path. It's a choice that we make. A lot of times people think, I think sometimes if I forget, that fear, anxiety, worry is something that happens to me. But it's actually a choice that I'm choosing to make. It's actually something I'm choosing to do or something I'm choosing not to do. That we don't have to live that way anymore. We're going to choose a higher path, joy, the road less traveled, a way set before us that God takes us where we need to go and leave, we leave behind the things that we need to leave behind. In this series, I really want you to do this one thing, and you can write this in your notes. Choose joy. I want you to choose joy because joy is a choice. Don't, don't let joy be something that, you know, happens to you at random. No, 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 no. This is something we can choose for ourselves. This is, this is a choice we make. No, I'm going to choose to be joyful. The command said, always be joyful. Always be joyful. And there's a few different ways that we can do this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about it for, for, for several weeks, and my wife's going to help. I, I just cannot wait to hear her talk about this topic because my wife has conquered many, many things in this area, so I just cannot wait for her to share her opinion and what she's uncovered from the Word of God to share with you. But today, today, the message is called Freedom is Fearless. Freedom is Fearless. I want you to turn your Bibles to John 8. John 8 is where I'm going to be talking about this. Freedom is fearless. It's secret weapon to me. It's, it's secret weapon number one. Secret weapon number one is, is freedom is fearless. So we want to talk about how we get some freedom. What does it mean? How do we get it? John 8, starting in verse 31, says this. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So you're going to know the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. Pause right there. Knowing and staying faithful to the truth brings freedom to your life. Knowing and staying faithful to the truth brings freedom in your life. People usually think that freedom is doing whatever we want. Come on. How many of us have ever thought that freedom just means I get to do whatever I want? Go ahead. I have. It's cool. I, I, I know that many of us think that I can just, freedom is doing anything that I ever wanted. But freedom is actually doing what you know is right and true. It's a, it's, a, it's a minor difference, but it's a major difference. It's a minor difference in our mind, but it's a major difference in impact. Because how many times have we done whatever we wanted but it left us feeling not free, but trapped. Doing whatever we wanted left us feeling trapped. Well, how could that be? I had freedom. No, you didn't have freedom because freedom is knowing the truth and living the truth. 
and letting the truth set you free. Verse 33 says this, and this is what the people said to him. This is what some of you might be thinking. This is what I thought at first. They'd be like, but we're descendants of Abraham. They said, we've never been slaves to anyone. Maybe you've thought that. Well, I have rarely thought that because I've been, I've been prisoner lots of times. <laughs> so I didn't really cross my mind this way. But these guys that he's talking to, these Pharisees, these religious leaders, they're saying, um, no, I'm, wait, I'm not a slave. What are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not a slave to anyone. We've never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean you will be set free? Well, that's kind of funny if you think about it. That's kind of funny if you study this out a little bit. Never been slaves to anyone. I thought these were the same people that their whole culture is built around the fact that they were in slavery for over 400 years in Egypt. Okay, okay. So wait, you're saying you've never been slaves to anyone. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe you are remembering it wrong. <laughs> you, rem you ever remembered something wrong? You ever remembered something the way that you wanted to remember it? Oh, I know, I've done this. You know, um, <laughs> I shouldn't share that. No, I'm not going to share that. That's okay, never mind. You know, we got selective memory. We got selective memory, and we only remember the good things about the stuff when we don't remember what, what had really happened was something totally different. Okay, we have selective memory, and that's exactly what these people are doing. I've never been a slave. What are you talking about, man? I've never been a slave to anyone. 400 years, they were slaves in Egypt. Okay, does anybody have that one friend? Who has that one big glaring problem in their life? Or maybe they have lots of problems in their life. And they're like, what? You tripping. I'm good. And you're looking at their, your, their life and going, mm, well, mm, you know, you might want to think about that a little bit. Or you're like trying to find the right way to say it. But you just like, you don't want to tell them that they're an idiot because they're your friend. And you don't think that's going to work. But it's like you're looking at their life going, man, and some of you are that friend. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I went there. I'm fine, no problems. You know, denying there is a problem is the biggest problem we could have. The minute we discover the problem, we can start to get out of that problem. But when we start tricking ourselves, when we start deceiving ourselves, I'm not a slave. <laughs> I do what I want. I do whatever I fit. I'm not a slave. We're deceiving ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves, okay? This is something that we need to get away from. We need to realize, hey, everybody has problems. Man, I, I'm the pastor with a microphone in my hand just got done telling you about how I was in jail. Man, get over yourself. You got a little couple problems too. Let's just face them. Let's just face them and, and get them out in the open. You probably came here today not because you wanted to be entertained. You probably came here today because you want to hear more about Jesus. Maybe you just want to check this church thing out, or maybe you really just want something because your life isn't where you know it should be. So I'm telling you, maybe let's look at our life and just say, what, what do I take the eyes and look at myself and say, what, what do I need to deal with here? What are some things in my life that I could, that I could deal with right now and, and might, might help? I mean, this is just the Bible talking to us that these people say, we're not slaves. But Jesus replied, I tell you the truth because it's the truth that sets you free, it's not a catchphrase. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Okay, interesting. Let's talk about that. Verse 35. A slave, say slave. slave. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son, say son. Hello. Or daughter. <laughs> is a part of the family forever. A slave is not a permanent part of the family, but a son or a daughter, is a part of the family forever. Being stuck in a rut that is keeping you from God, like a life of sin, creates insecurity. It creates fear. It creates the feeling of being trapped, the feeling of being powerless, the feeling that there's nothing I can do to get out of this. It perpetuates fear, worry, and stress. And, and Jesus is trying to tell us, man, I am the truth. I am the way. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and I will give you rest. It's that feeling of, of non-permanence. Like anything can go wrong when we're stuck in a pattern of life. When we're not addressing our problems. Sometimes all we can see is the, is the fruit. We don't know what's wrong. I, I take my eyes out. I look at myself, but I don't see the problem. It's hard to see your own problems. 
Amen, everybody? It's hard. It is. It is really hard to see your own problem. Sometimes what you need to do is just look at the results of your life and say, why is my life, why do I keep on going? Why do I keep lapping around this issue? And then we can begin to say, oh, maybe I have, a, maybe I'm stuck in a rut that's getting me round and round in circles, and that's why I keep facing this issue in my life. So if we look at the fruit and we see, oh, I don't want this fruit in my life, that's when we can go down to the root. And we can start getting to the root of the issue, the root cause. And this is what, this is what Jesus says in verse 36. So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Because when you're a son in the family, it doesn't matter what issues you have, no matter what problems you have, you're a permanent member of that family. Permanence. Now, talk about being free from fear. I, any, anything that goes wrong. Anything, any mistakes I make. I'm a permanent member of this family. I can watch the news. I can make mistakes. My, my close friends can make mistakes. But I'm I'm secure. I'm secure. I'm in this family forever. And no power of sin, no devil, no issue, no problem can ever separate me from the love of God. That's a sense of freedom right there. That means I don't have to pretend that viruses don't exist. I just don't have to worry about it. Because no matter what happens, I'm in the family forever. No matter what happens, I have a secure place. That's how we find security in the midst of hard times. It's not the removal of hard times. It's the security inside of hard times. That's freedom. Man, that is freedom right there. If the sun sets you free, you are truly free. Jesus is the sun. He is the truth. He makes us truly free. And freedom is fearless. Freedom is fearless. So in your notes, write this down. Fear less. Step one is this. Get free from fear. Find freedom in Jesus. Get free from fear. Find freedom in Jesus. For, 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 for. I almost tripped all over that one. That was okay. A lot of F's in that one, okay? This is the good kind of F-bomb. Good kind of F-bomb right here. Find freedom. Find freedom from fear. Freedom in Jesus. Okay, I'm a, if I keep going, I might mess it up, which would be a disaster. That would be a disaster. Get free from fear. Find freedom in Jesus. It's like um, I've been a literal prisoner before. I told you about that. It's unpredictable. But let me tell you kind of what it, what it kind of looks like. When you're, a, when you're in that rut of problems, when you're in that way of life, when you're outside of the family of Jesus, and even if things look good on the outside to other people, you got the job, you got the money, you got the car, but things are just like, you know, my life isn't exactly where it should be because when the doors are closed, I'm always fighting with my family and things just aren't right and I'm not living the way I should be. Because being a, being a slave to an unjust ruler is very unpredictable. It's very unpredictable. You don't know what to expect. Uh, and when I was, <laughs> since we talked about me being in jail, I'll keep that going. I was in jail and they, it was the most random place. There were some things that were very predictable, but there was other things very unpredictable. I remember everybody was going to bed. Okay, there was like 50 guys in this max security, like, uh, it was not a dorm, but whatever. It, there's different, there's different like pods, you know, and then there's a common area. Um, and then it's 9.30 at night, okay? It's 9.30 at night, and we wake up early. Breakfast is at like 4.30 in the morning just to mess with us, I think. There's no reason for it. It's just the way of time they did it. And so 9.30 is pretty late. 9.30, pretty late at night. And then 9.30 comes. Everybody's laying down. The lights are about to go off. And then here comes this officer. Mail call. It's like 9, 9.30 at night. And, and the guy next to me, he was like 65 years old. This guy, he's so funny. He's like, is he drunk? What is going on in here? And like rubbing his eyes, getting up. And the mail call at 9.30 at night. What, what is that? Being a, being a prisoner to yourself, being a prisoner to your wants and needs, being a prisoner to uh, addiction or a lifestyle can be very unpredictable. It pops up any time at the most inconvenient times and wants to, wants to keep us down, hold us down like that. It's, it's totally random, it seems. Okay, so this being a slave to an unjust ruler is like being a... Being a a slave to fear, anxiety, and stress. 
But here's the key. Here's the trick. Listen to this, everybody. I'm still 100% a slave. I'm submitted, 100%, but I changed rulers. That's, that's the difference. That's what people don't tell you. That, that's what people don't want to say. That's, that's, it's like, it sounds, because it sounds weird at first. It sounds like, well, that's not freedom. Oh, but it is. Oh, but it is. I'm, I'm still 100% subject, but to Jesus. I'm, I'm a slave to him. Romans says it like this, Romans 6, 19. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led even deeper into sin. It was unpredictable. It kept you up at night. There was nothing but fear, anxiety, and stress. You didn't know where you were going or what you were doing, and you thought you knew, but then you got there, and it didn't satisfy you. You kept on being a slave to that stuff, and it kept on driving you deeper down into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living. So I'm still 100% subject, but just not to sin. Not to, not to the world, not to, not to the enemy of my soul, not to any person, not to any sickness, not to any fear. No, I am a slave to one, Jesus, so that you will be holy. And dare I say, truly free. We need to switch rulers. That's what we need to do. If we wanna get freedom, and we want to get free from fear by finding freedom, then we need to switch rulers is what we really need to do. Who are you submitted to right now? Rhetorical. Don't answer me. It's okay. You can think about it. What are you a slave to right now? Is it shopping? Is it, uh, is it whatever the news says? You know, is it, um, is it your own wants and needs? Is it your desires? Uh, I mean, what is it? Because when we're a slave to that stuff, it holds us down. When we're submitted to that stuff, it holds us down. We need to switch rulers. Choose the right ruler. I still don't know exactly what's going to happen and when. But I'm a permanent part of this family. And so I don't have to live in fear ever again. It's a weird thing that happened. Uh, and I don't know. Maybe I don't, I don't deal with fear the same way uh, probably a lot of people do. Um, a lot of this scare stuff, like I know I'm probably... Um, alienating myself a little bit right now because some of you might and some of you watching online definitely might feel a little bit afraid of like stuff that goes on. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's because of what I went through. I'm not, it doesn't, I just don't care. Is that weird? Is it weird to say that? I just don't care. It's like, you know, if it happens, I guess it's going to happen. I mean, it's, it's the sense of, it's actually kind of freeing. It's like, I just don't care. It can happen. Yeah, we could get wiped out. I shouldn't even be talking like this. We could get wiped out. It could be global war. I just, I just don't, you know, if it happens, I guess it's going to happen then. That's what freedom feels like. It's not that, man, I have to like make sure nothing happens to me. That's not freedom. Freedom is it doesn't matter what happens to me. You can't do anything to me. You can't do anything to me. Maybe it's... Uh, the seed of rebelliousness that I grew up with as a kid, you know, like that my parents try to ground me and I'm like, <laughs> whatever, I'm just going to leave. I don't care. <laughs> I was, my mom is like laughing and crying right now as she watches this. She's like, oh, it's so true. <laughs> couldn't ground me, couldn't do anything. It's just that same kind of sense of, what are you going to do, ground me? I'm just going to leave. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, take my Xbox? I'm just going to go take someone else's. <laughs> like, I don't care. That it's, it's, it's like that, not exactly, but it's kind of like that. It's like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can't, you can't hold me back anymore. I'm a permanent member of this family. It's really not that complicated, to be honest with you. It's, it sounds complicated, but it's really not that complicated. We've, we've had lab labels put on us like our whole life. So let's say um, you grew up in a household where you, where you anytime you like were mis misleading, you know, mom called you a liar. You know, so you got this little label on you. You got this thing on you that's like, this is who I am. This is what I believe about myself. Maybe it was more like me, and you got one that says, like, addicted. You know, this is who I am. So I'm just going to put that right there. You know, this is, this is, these are the things I'm a slave to because this is my identity. This is who I am. Maybe someone else told me. Maybe I did it to myself. Afraid. Hmm? How about that one? You like that one, don't you? That one's terrible. 
hate this one, but you know, this is just who I am. I'm a fearful person, or so we say about ourselves, and so we put these labels on us. How about this one? Anxious. We got anxiety going on. Selfish. Well, you know, my friends, they always tell me, you're, so, you're, always, you're always taking care of yourself, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You always get yourself first, huh? Anybody ever tell you that about yourself? Well, I hope they didn't because sometimes it has a way of sticking to you. How about greedy? Greedy is another one a lot of people get. Some people get called snobs. Some people get called uppity or whatever. You know, people say things about and you begin to just, you're a slave to it. Now I, now I have to. Fake. Fake. Someone said that about you. And so now you're just going to, you're going to live like that. And we're slaves to these things. We get these labels all over us. We get them from every which place. And, and that's the thing. Like, I didn't have any labels on me before, so I was an open book. Like, tell me anything you want, and I'm just going to believe it. I'm going to kind of run with that. Because I didn't have identity, but now I do. And these, this is my identity. This is who I am. And, and some people think, some people think, well, I just need to, like, get a pen, you know, and I need to scratch these labels out and do something with these. But what we really need to do is we need to replace these labels. I belong to Jesus. That's who I am. This is who I am. This is my world view. I am a Jesus follower. I am free. I live in freedom. This is who I am. I'm his. I belong to him. You, did you hear that? I belong to him. I'm free because I'm free in him and I'm in him. I'm a slave to him. I'm a slave to Christ. And that makes me his and free. I'm a son. I'm a son of the most high God. He owns everything, created everything, and I'm his son. There is nothing that you can do. There is nothing you can do. To ch this is who I am. When other stickers come, no, you just go, they bounce off. They bounce off. No, no, this is who I am. Finding identity in Christ is finding freedom. The truth will set you free. And the truth is, you belong to Jesus. You are free. You are his. And you are a son and daughter of the most high God. That is truth. Amen. The truth will set you free. Freedom is not having no labels. That just opens you up. There was a story in the Bible that talks about that a little bit. It says that there was a man who was uh, possessed with, with many demons, had a lot of demons, and he got free. And, and Jesus said about, he told this, and the house was empty. So there was, n there was all of these, all this stuff going on inside of the heart of a person. You call it demonic oppression. Call it lifestyle choices. Man, just call it whatever you want. But what happened was, Jesus set that person free. But then, they didn't replace it with anything. They didn't, they didn't replace. So, the, so when these people returned, when these things returned, when fear came back, when selfishness came back, when addiction came back, it was replaced with nothing. When what we needed to do is see the house be full. This is my house. This is who I am. I fill myself with God. There's no room for anything else. There's no room for fear. There's no room for stress. There's no room for anxiety. I don't want you guys to be stressed ever again. That's really what I want for you. You don't need to. You don't need to stress out ever again. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? You're like, well, I can think of a few things. <laughs> but the way, I, the way I look at it is the worst thing that could happen is I could, I could lose my life. And then I'm going to be as free as I'll ever be in the, for the rest of my life, even death. I've, I've, had, I've had my life hanging in the balance several times, and it's a scary thing. It was one time on the 10th Street Bridge in Yuba City. I was, we were driving. The guy was drunk. I was with him, and we took out like 30 feet of guardrail over the 10th Street Bridge. It's like a 150-foot drop, and the, 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 the railing went all the way down to the river bottoms, where there's this dirt bike track, and we just came to, we came to, and we were all there on the bridge. There was nobody behind us. There was nobody in front of us. God really saved my life that day. But I can tell you with confidence, you know, if my life was put right before me, what do I have to lose? Nothing. So good. So good to go. Let's talk about how you can get these labels off, because I want to help you. I want to help you get these labels off of your life, and so I want to give you some action steps that you can take. These are in your bulletin, and you can remember these for later. The first one is this. 
I want you to get free by getting together. Get free. Get, say it with me, together. Get free, get together. Get together because fear hates company. Fear wants to isolate you. Fear wants to keep you bound. Fear thrives in isolation. If you are struggling with fear, stress, or anxiety today, the last thing you want to do is get around healthy people. It's the last thing that you want to do. Believe me, I know, but it's the first thing we need to do is get around healthy people. If you struggle with fear, man, get with some people, some healthy people. They're going to give you perspective. They're going to help you. They're going to remind you who you are. They're going to, re- they're going to speak those correct labels over your life. The best way to get free and stay free is having a group of people who know you, who love you, who miss you when you don't show up, a group of people who take their masks off and are real with you, people who you can take your mask off with and you can be real with. Yes, I'm talking about life groups. Life groups are what we have around here to help get people together in groups so that we can can be free with one another. Freedom happens in the context of relationships. When we have a relationship with Jesus, that's step one. Getting a relationship with other Jesus followers, that's step two. That's step two. And if you're here today needing, needing either step, we got you. We got you. My man, would you put up that slide? Because the way to sign up for any one of our life groups is there's a church center app. There's a church center app that you can, that you can uh, download right here. It looks just like that, and then you punch in Lifeline Church, and we've got a whole bunch already. Like, groups are launching in April, but we already have like six or seven or eight. I don't know exactly. We've got lots of them that you can sign up for. Find one that works for you. Find one that's a, that's a day of the week that works for you. That's a time that works for you. Maybe it's a, there's, there's family fun night groups. Man, that one sounds really fun. There's men's discipleship group. Man, that sounds really good too. There's, there's women coming together, sharing their lives together. Man, we've got men's, women's, family, like literally anything you, I mean, it's not even, I don't know how we did it, but we, we did it. We've got groups for you. Anything that you're looking for, we've got one for you. And there's even more going to populate every single week all the way to April. I'd highly encourage you, if you want to get free from fear and find freedom in Jesus, right there. Sign up for one of our groups. Get free, get together. Step number two is this. Get free, get real. Remember what sets you free? It's the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So in order to get free, we need to get real. We need to fill ourselves with truth. We need to fill ourselves with truth. His truth sets you free. I'm talking about, I'm talking about this guy right here. I'm talking about this guy right here. That's right. I, I still believe that the Bible is, is the way that we should be starting our day every single day. Man, if, if, if you haven't tried it, you ought to try it. It's good stuff because it's filled with truth. Every single word applies to you. I mean, just get in. I, I start my day with, a, it's called the, the Solid Life Whole Reading Bible Plan. Like you can get on that little version Bible app, find a plan that works for you, follow along through it. I mean, this is a book of truth. It knows the truth before we do. Now that's special. It knows the truth before we do. Like, like how the earth was a sphere before science could prove it. Thousands of years before we proved it scientifically, the Bible said that God sits on top of the sphere, the globe. Thousands of years. We were still thinking, oh, earth flat. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's flat. Bible like, it's all right. They'll find out eventually. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Bible knows things about the world, about you, about me, that we don't even know yet. This can be trusted. The word can be trusted. The, the Bible talked about when, when Jesus would be born, uh, where he would die, how he would die, how long he'd stay dead for, spoil alert, not long. He knew that the stars were uncountable way before we had the technology to prove it. I mean, people kept counting the stars, and then like a year later, they're like, oh, you missed three, and they'd count some more. And the Bible said they're, they're uncountable. And now we got the technology. Yeah, it just keeps on going. Bible's like, called it, called it, called it, called it, called it. This thing's calling it. Calling it. And this, this book has a lot to say about your life as well. Like Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. Are you struggling with, with provision today? Man, meditate. Think about his word and what his word says about you. His word says you're going to be taken care of. Don't even trip. 
Just seek first his kingdom and everything will be added to you. How about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 said that we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Many people come and they say, well, pastor, I just don't know which way I should go. I just don't know what I should do. I'm like, well, you know, maybe we ought to just like get in this way more. Maybe we ought to be reading this way more. How about Jeremiah 29, 11? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Look, you're going to be good. Just rest in him. If we want to get free, we got to get more truth in us. Because the truth sets you free. And so we need to get real, as I'm calling it. Get real. And reality is right here. Man, I keep on watching documentaries, and they say the stuff. The silliest things, man. I'm on Netflix just like you are, okay? And I'm like watching some of this stuff. I'm like, some of it I'm like, okay. And the other half I'm like, no, <laughs> no, that's not it. Because I'm choosing, like I'm, like I'm saying you can too. I'm choosing to believe this. I'm choosing to believe this is true. That this can guide us in every which way we want to go. What if instead of letting our minds destroy us with imagined outcomes, we let the Bible inform our future and eliminate fear by replacing it with truth. Amen. Get in your Bible every day and believe the truth that speaks over your life. Next one is this. Get free by get moving. Get free, get moving. It's like that infinity loop of like, well, I'm depressed and stressed out, so I guess I'm just going to stay home today, so I'm not really going to do anything. So I stayed home all day today and I didn't do anything, so I feel, I feel depressed and stressed out. So I guess tomorrow I'm going to stay home and not do anything. So I feel depressed, and it's like this over and over and over again when we really just need to step out of that loop by getting moving. Just put your hand to the plow. Do something. It's going to build your confidence. It's going to build you up. Some of us have been stuck in that feedback loop for so long, and we're letting that anxiety, that pressure, that stress, that fear of not measuring up to something really weigh us down. When what we need to do is we need to step in and do what Matthew 6.33 says, and that's seek first the kingdom of God and get moving doing that. Get moving doing that. Don't get stuck in that infinity loop forever. Breaking the cycle starts with getting up and taking action. Even a small action will do. How about 30 minutes? Let me introduce you to Growth Track. Growth Track is the way that we get up and get moving around here. Growth Track helps you discover your purpose, make a difference. Growth Track helps you to, to know your spiritual gifts and even your personality to how you can move and flow in your life to get up and get moving. Growth Track is 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes after service. And you can just show up, you can start it any Sunday. We, we shortened it because we're thinking, man, we just want to make it as easy as possible for people to, to join the team, to, for people to understand like how they can use their gifts, how they can use their talents. Why would we make that longer and harder? Why don't we make that more accessible? And so we've made it more accessible than ever. Growth Track is 10 minutes after service every single Sunday. It's only two steps. And step one is every week. Anytime you're ready to start, so are we. And anytime you're ready to finish, so are we, because step two is every week too. Yeah, it's going great. So why don't we just do that? Get up, get moving, step into all that God has for me and find freedom by getting moving in my church, in my community, in my family, knowing my gifts, knowing my talents. It's time for us to get up and get moving. The last one is this. Get free, get giving, get giving. I saved the, the hardest one for last. This is the toughest one. I, I think by and large is the hardest one. But once we get this one, it really sets us free on all the others. Giving is, is a really tough thing for us to do sometimes because we're, we're stuck in this place where we're trying to take care of ourselves. It's, it's very hard to do because as much as we take care of ourselves, the, the harder and harder it gets and the more we realize that we just can't do it. We can't take care of ourselves just right. We are the wrong ruler of our lives. One of the most deceptive things I've seen take people over is the idea that we need to take care of ourselves. And if you call yourself a Jesus follower, like if you're here today and you're like, oh yeah, pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm following Jesus. I, I do all that. Then you really need to listen to this because this is something that we, we really need to be actively doing. And if you're still on that journey, I'm so glad you're here, by the way. But if you haven't taken that plunge yet, if you're just checking out church, checking out Jesus, I mean, hey, I'm glad you're here. And I hope you hear something that really 
that really impacts you today. But if you're a Jesus follower, please listen to this. I want you to give the first of your time, talent, and treasure. These are like three areas that, that giving is, is, is majorly impacted in our lives. The first of our time means, I mean, what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Is it this? If it, not, I'm not, some people read their Bible right here. That's, that's okay too. But I am like wanting to give God the first part of my time. And so when I, when I get up and I put my feet on the ground and I'm cold, so I got to put on my, my hoodie on and get all ready to go, man, the first part of my day, I want to give to him. Because what we do first shows where our priority is. What we do first shows where our priority is. So I want to give God the first bit of my time. I do my Bible reading in the morning and I, historically I'm not a morning person, okay? But I chose to do that because I understood this principle. I want to put him first. I do my Bible reading there, my prayer. You know, even if I only got five minutes, sometimes I'm busy, I only got five minutes. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it anyways. I'm going to do a little prayer, do a little Bible reading, and I'm going to start my day right. And that's how I'm going to fill myself with his truth. The first year time, the first year talent. Some of you heard my story, how I was a musician growing up, played in lots of bands. And even after I got saved, I, I, I didn't really like turn that over to God yet. But as I grew in the Lord, I decided, you know what? I'm going to give my talent to God and I'm going to give him the first of my talent. And that's just what I did. And I, and I, instead of playing in all the bands, I decided to start playing here. You didn't see me up here today, but historically I've been up here a lot. You know, I'd be singing and playing guitar and playing drums, but I decided to give him the first of my talent because, because giving is such an important part of the a walk of a Jesus follower. The last part is, is giving your treasure, giving your treasure. And of course, this one's actually the most simple, even though it's still tough to do sometimes, it's the most simple. God says the first portion of your increase, like that first 10%, like whatever it is, whether it's your, your, your paycheck, your tax return. And when Tiffany and I get like a gift card, yeah, yeah, we give off that. When I do someone's wedding and they like, you know, kick something, I give off of that. I tithe off of that. If, if I, I sell my car, I just sold my little hoopty like three months ago. Praise Jesus sold that thing, got that thing out of my driveway uh, of the devil right there. Man, I'm about to, never mind, never mind. <laughs> sold that thing, but you know, they gave me like however much money I sold it for, not very much. And I, but I took the first portion of that and I gave it to him because it's very clear. God just says, just do it. Just do it. Seek first the kingdom of God and see that everything else, I have once I started doing that in my walk with Jesus, I've never gone without. I've never gone without. We actually put our money where our mouth is. That's why we have like tithe challenge cards back there. But that's not really what my message is about today. I just want to let you know that if we want to get free, we got to get giving. Because if we keep ourselves in a place where we're trying to take care of ourselves, where I need to take care of myself, I need to meet my own needs, let me tell you, you're the wrong ruler for your life. You can't do it. You're going to leave yourself in fear. You're going to leave yourself let down. Man, I, I, I'm not in charge of my own life. Remember, we talked about this. I'm his. I belong to him. So I do things his way. And that's how I get to live in freedom every single day. That's how I get to live fearless every single day. And if I catch myself slipping back to this part right here, I just say, no, 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 no. And sometimes I even, I'll even do it. I'll look at myself like in the mirror or I'll, talk, I'll close my eyes and I'll look and I'll be like, I'm his. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of the most high God. I belong to him and he's got me. He's got me taken care of. Whenever I'm, I'm facing a, a difficult situation, I can just quiet my soul for a minute. Or if I'm worried about what the news reporter is saying, or if I'm worried about what the stock market is doing, if I'm worried about what anything else is going on, I can just quiet my soul and rest in this principle that I talked to you about today. No, 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 no. I don't belong to that stuff. I don't belong to that. I belong to Jesus, and he has got me. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. We're about to pray in just a moment, and I want to give everyone here an opportunity to respond to this message today. And to, you know, Some of you are thinking right now, man, I, I need that. I want that so badly, and that is exactly what I think God wants to do today. You're here today for a reason. And the reason is God wants to free you from fear. You don't have to live there anymore. 
God has a better future for you. With your heads down and your eyes closed, I want you to imagine a different life for yourself. No longer worrying about what might happen. Get all, getting all that time back with your loved ones that you've spent stressed out and afraid. I want you to imagine your life staying connected with healthy people, serving in your community of faith, drawing truth out of the Bible and having this relationship with your resources where you can give it freely and get it freely because it doesn't hold you anymore. Where isolation doesn't keep you bound, but community keeps you connected with life-giving people. Where uncertainty doesn't rule your mind, but truth does. And if you'd rather fear less, I want you to take a step towards God today. And your future is in good hands when you trust in God. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over every single person here. I pray for open hearts and open minds to receive a new kind of freedom today that we would resolve in our hearts. Lord, I don't even belong to me. I don't belong to the labels that have been put on me. I don't belong to what anybody's ever said about me. I don't belong to what any kind of fear comes into my life. Lord, I belong to you. I belong to you and you are the truth and you set me free. So I want to give an invitation for every person here that would say, you know what? I want that for my life. I want Jesus to be first in my life. I want to be a Jesus follower and I want to live free knowing that he's the king of my heart. He's the king of my soul. He's the king of my life. And with him as my ruler, with him as my God, then I never have to be afraid ever again. If that's you today, I would ask you with all heads down and eyes closed, I would ask you to just just simply raise your hand up and say, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus today. Go ahead. You can do it right now and say, I want to give my life to Jesus today and make him Lord of my life. Put him first in my life. Amen. I see your hand. Amen. I see you and Jesus sees you. Amen. I see you and Jesus sees you. Come on, everybody. Let's pray this prayer together like you've never prayed it before. Come on. If you believe it, say it with me. Say, Father God, I give my life to you. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins. I give you my whole heart, my mistakes, my shortcomings, even the good parts. It's all yours. You are my God and my Lord. Fill me with your spirit and make me new. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on. Can we celebrate, everybody? Let's go. It's so good. It's so good. I'm so proud of you. Everything that Jesus is about to do in your life, I just want to tell you, it's going to be amazing. You are going to be so blindsided by how God is going to step into your life and take things out that don't need to be there and add some things that do need to be there. I'm so proud of you.